She's a mom, a wife, a lawyer at the largest and one of the leading law firms in the British Virgin Islands. And interestingly, she's also a farmer. Let's meet Miss Vereen Vantapool of Virgin Islands Organic Herbs. here with Mrs. Vereen Vantapool Nibs, farmer, lawyer, mother, wife, in her very expansive greenhouse. <laughs> Hi, Vereen, <laughs> yes, I purchased, well, how did, I, how did we connect? I contacted you oh, after you having lunch at Lady Sarah's one day okay. in September 2018. And uh, if I could jump straight to the story, um, I was having lemon basil, basil lemonade, lemonade basil, yeah, lemonade, basil lemonade, and it, it struck me, hmm, if there's a drink that requires fresh herbs yeah. on your menu, yeah. guess what? You'd be needing fresh herbs. Yes. So I have basil in my garden, and I just thought I'd give Portia a call and say, hi, you need some basil. <laughs> so that's how Portia and I connected. Um, yes, and I've been purchasing basil and parsley and cilantro and... All that stuff from you. You need to tell us, though, Vereen. You're a lawyer next yes. door. Yes. I'm not going to call your company's name. <laughs> I know you work long hours. You have a son yes. and a husband who could actually demand all of your time. How do you find time to do this? And please tell us, what's the size of this greenhouse? Because it's not uh, an ordinary little greenhouse that we put up at our home gardens. It's about 80. To 80 feet. 80, 80, 30. 80 feet um, by 30 feet. Yes, width and length. Um, how do I find time? Yes. Honestly, I get cussed a lot. Oh, you do? Yeah, because I come out in the garden, it's my zen space. Yes. You know, when I'm out here, I come out intending to just spend an hour. I can relate. And um, I end up spending a lot longer than an hour. But um, Realistically, I can't do all of this myself, so I do have a bit of help. You have a bit of help. I have a bit of help to organize the banking. Um, I do a lot of the uh, seeding. And by banking, she means all these... The um, terracing. Terracing. Yeah, yes. the terracing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I get help with the terracing and organizing the irrigation um, hoses. Right. Um, I like to do a bit of weeding if the weather is right, so I do a little bit of that, but weeding in a area this large is, you know very extensive so I don't do that very often again I need help with that so all in all it's been a uh, what you see here is really a result of a couple of years I started off further down and been working my way up and you know this hasn't happened all at once um, and it's been a nice labor of love I'd say mm -hmm. I've enjoyed it because I really like it um, but it's not something I could do by myself. Were you inspired by someone or something? How did you start? How did you get into farming in the first place? Well, funny enough, growing up, having a garden, or as my father would call it, a grung, mm -hmm. that's always been part of my history, my background. And I didn't realize then how much it would have influenced me now right. um, because before I would you know just water a couple of things but I didn't think at that time mm -hmm. that I'd be actually having my own garden certainly of not of the scale right so gardening and farming has always been in my blood okay uncles dad you know I was growing something and what launched me on the path of actually doing this what I'm doing and what I'm doing is actually I grow culinary herbs mostly for the time being right now. Mm -hmm. So I have a variety of um, herbs that you'd use in your cooking. So if I may, sure. Um, sure. I have mint on this side up here. I have what would be thyme growing this way. Um, I have some celery on the, along the banks down here. Um, there's a bit of cilantro right in front here, uh, Italian parsley, and all around 
I have lots of parsley as well. Uh, we have tea basil on that side, a little bit of sage in the corner, some chives, some rosemary, some lemongrass. So at the moment, the focus has been uh, culinary herbs. Um, I have some okra there. So what drove you into the direction of culinary herbs? I am happy that you've gone. <laughs> gone. I mean, I, I haven't been purchasing as much as I'd like to recently because of, you know, we know what the environment is like. However, I am delighted that you've gone into culinary herbs because I have a yeah. ready supply um, for my restaurant. So we have lots of farmers in the BVI and while the market is large and we could perhaps all grow different things and find an outlet to sell them, I thought that I'd begin with focusing with culinary herbs because I thought it was a nice complement to our tourism industry mm -hmm. and a nice complement to our restaurants in particular to mm -hmm. be able to to say and use fresh herbs mm -hmm. in, in various dishes. So that was my business head in terms of why selecting and just focusing on this type of product. Um, it's a great niche to have. Too. Yeah, I, I, I like niches um, and you get good and, you know, have enough production and you, you know, you conquer one corner of the market, if you could put it that way. Later on, I may consider other things. Um, I find that certainly in this area, vegetables, I get a lot of challenges from pests. Mm -hmm. um, so, so far, the selection of culinary herbs has been really good for me because they don't really trouble um, my selection that much. So, And it's mostly leaves. It's, it's not so much that they're producing some exactly, sort of food or something exactly, like that. It exactly. requires more. Exactly. So mm -hmm. I'm able to sow and reap quicker mm -hmm. um, with this type of product. Um, but the future does suggest that I might want to try a couple of other things mm -hmm. as well. But so your clientele, as you alluded to earlier, is primarily restaurants, hotel restaurants and independent restaurants. Yes. Um, and you find that that sustains your production level? Um, the last couple of months have been, have been rough. Mm -hmm. um, we were doing very well, I think, um, before COVID mm -hmm. and, um, well, I think everybody could, yes. <laughs> they have a story about what yes. happened. Um, so I'm anxious to see what will come After. as, you know, we turn over and I think I'll determine, you know, what happens next in terms of business development. Mm -hmm. Um, if this alone, um, could actually meet all my expectations or I would need to expand in terms of product, product offering. Mm -hmm. um, but so far, I'm really excited about just, just this. So what are your friends, I mean, well, your colleagues at the office, when you say, well, you know, I'm five minutes late because I had to go on the farm this morning to harvest some herbs for whomever. I mean, do they, because I know at one point I was standing in line at the supermarket and a lady was, no, actually I went to the farmer's market and a lady was offering me something and I said, I grow quite a bit of that at home. I don't really need to buy that. She said, who are you? You never put your hand in the soil yet. I said, really? How did you come to that conclusion? She said, I look at you. You look cutesy cutesy. You're not ever going to put your hand in the dirt. I said, don't be so presumptuous, you know? So wow. what do your colleagues think when you tell them that you were on the farm this morning or last night or you have to go home to look after your farm? I actually never tell them. I just keep going. And um, I might get a comment, you look tired today. Yes, yes, a lot has been going on uh -huh. without actually going into, you know, what keeps me, you know, perhaps extra tired, my extracurricular activities. But um, I was saying for those who know, mm -hmm. they have been very supportive. Right. And um, they have encouraged me to continue doing what I'm doing here. Um, we don't know yet, you know how sustainable it would be, but right. it's certainly an interesting stat. And um, I've gotten very good encouragement from friends and colleagues mm -hmm. on it. Yeah. <laughs> do you know, do you know, I mean, I obviously, you know, go, going around and we were talking about this earlier today that we need to find more male farmers because so far we've only been interviewing females. Is that right? Yes. And even when I do research, like within the United States, most of the new, young and up, up and coming farmers are female. 
There are some males in the U.S., but there are a lot of females who are moving into the middle part of the country yeah. and starting what they call their homesteads, right? Okay. So here, we have found that there are quite a number, of, well, we, we don't know quite a number, but the ones that we've interviewed so far have been yeah. females. And so what I want to know from you is, do you know any other female farmers? Um, I know the older farmers may be male, yeah. you know, locally. Yes. But it seems we're having difficulty attracting the young men into farming. Am I right or am I wrong or am I just speculating? I don't even know. That's not something I've given much thought to. Mm. Um, I know my cousins, they have started gardens of their own. Male I know or female? Male, okay. but female as well. Mm -hmm. um, a number of persons, particularly during the lockdown, got excited about, you know, yeah. doing something during yes. that period and a lot of home gardens were started. But I hadn't realized that there was a little more interest coming from the females than the males. I don't know. Well, maybe maybe over the next few months we'll get it right. <laughs> <laughs> but I do know, like you said, quite a number of people started gardens during COVID. And it's interesting to note that they were very concerned about food sustainability, like, oh, oh my okay. goodness, am I going to be able to get food or okay. whatever? That was the main reason why, why people started. Why does, okay. However, I thought it was shared boredom, actually. Well, it could have been some of that as well. But some people have just reverted back, you know, because vegetable farming is challenging. Yes. It's difficult. By yes. the time you get the bugs and the pests and all that sort of stuff, and you go to work in the morning and they look perfectly fine, and you come home in the afternoon and they're drooping or half dead, and some people... Are eaten. Yeah, or eaten right down to nothing, especially the pumpkin plants. And some people got very discouraged. Okay. Yeah. So what sustains you? What keeps you going? Because I know right now um, there's some challenges maybe with either too much rain or not yeah. enough sun, that yeah. sort of thing. What keeps you going even now that there isn't even a lot of commercial activity right. because of COVID? I have a vision for what I'd like to see before I say to myself that it's over and I would like to abandon this project. Mm -hmm. And I'm still working through that. Um, this wasn't always here, this greenhouse. So I've had a chance to study this area, mm -hmm. study what grows best where. Mm -hmm. And I moved to try and organize this greenhouse because I, I think I'm very determined to see what the maximum yield from this space is. Mm -hmm. And the sun at a certain time of day gets so hot in this area that it really um, was affecting the, the crops. So I, I think I just have a real drive to see this place all fully done out. Mm -hmm. um, when that happens and I enjoy a full yield from it, then I could determine, you know, what I would I wouldn't do after that but for me the drive is just there I okay. just want to see it go to a certain level okay. before I pull back from it and you're willing to buy and the time. Uh, right yes right Fantastic. Take, take my time um, I couldn't do much selling uh, during the the lockdown period mm -hmm. but um, over time there were some sales still so mm -hmm. it wasn't as if I wasn't doing anything because mm -hmm. there's a local market for herbs as well right so I am on an individual basis or more on the commercial? Commercial, like commercial. yeah, small, so, small markets. Um, people like fresh herbs right. for certain things. Um, right. Thyme, cilantro, you know, so um, I've been giving that some look, um, pushing the products in a little bit more mainstream fashion mm -hmm. so that others could see that, oh, okay, this is available. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I find um, like going to farmers market sometimes people may be interested in a particular product but because they've never used it and they don't know how to use it yeah. or they figure they can't use enough of it, okay. they are not purchasing it. So I'm thinking maybe people, if we can do some little educational Hmm. series to tell people how to use cilantro because I know when I was growing up herbs were everything okay. we made tea you cooked with it you made poultices from it if you somebody had a cut or whatever you know there are all sorts of ways to use them right. and I guess that information hasn't really been passed down through the generations hmm. 
But now, as we become more concerned about our health and well-being, eating a certain way and just, you know, eating from nature, yes. um, for people to be more, uh, more educated on how to use certain herbs and spices. So I think one of the things we're going to do this afternoon is use some of your herbs and spices to show people how they can use them and how they can um, keep them in their refrigerators and use them over a period of weeks okay. or whatever yes. um, to get them more interested in buying okay, great. buying herbs locally. Excellent. Yeah. So if we could harvest some mint, mint. and some parsley okay. and some cilantro and we're going to do two things we're going to make a quick sauce and we're going to make a syrup so we just harvested these fresh herbs from greens lovely garden. We have here parsley, we have some cilantro, rosemary, mint, and dill. And all of these herbs can be used very effectively in Caribbean cooking. And what we're going to do for you is make a chimichurri sauce, which can be used on roasted meats, roasted chicken, on fish. We're going to fix some salmon and show you how you can make this sauce, keep it in your refrigerator, and just use it whenever. Um, these here, rosemary, great on chicken, poultry, um, you can also use this to make syrup, um, to flavor your drinks, as well as the peppermint. And dill is beautiful on fish, which I right. think most of you know. Um, these, if you want to make a syrup, you can use one part sugar, one part um, water, and let that boil down to a syrup. And then you want to add your herbs. So you don't want to boil your herbs in the syrup. You want to add your herbs after and allow the uh, herbs to sit in the syrup for a while and then you can use that to flavor your lemonades your iced tea absolutely delicious what do you call a while you said um, allow the herbs to sit like for an hour okay yeah so while the, it's cooling so, yes yeah, so the flavors can infuse into that okay. into that syrup we do this a lot at lady sarah's for our lemonades like you know we make we use herbs for lemonades okay. we use basil right. we use mint we use rosemary and we just make a syrup mm. first, let it boil, and yeah. then add the herbs. And once the syrup has been infused with the flavor of the herbs, you remove it and filter it and just save it to use as we like. Have you ever tried rosemary on lemonade? You've made that? We've had rosemary iced tea. Iced tea. Yes. Okay. So to make rosemary iced tea, you would basically make um, black tea from, use a tea bag, and then you'd add the rosemary syrup to flavor it. So you'd get that nice flavor of tea and rosemary right okay yeah okay okay so um this one we'd use a lot um particularly on salmon great on seafood and we use it in our quiches and that sort of thing as well and so what we're going to do is put these aside and we're going to make a chimichurri sauce from basil sorry parsley and we're going to use some cilantro uh you don't always have to use cilantro the other herb that you'd use in a chimichurri would be oregano we don't have any of that mature enough to cut right now. So we're just going to make a small amount of this. Put that aside. And we're going to take off, take off those stems. And then we're just going to chop this, right? smelling the parsley. Yes, and the local ingredients really are the best. You buy that stuff out of the supermarket, it's been there forever. You know, the flavor has almost vanished. Um, but when you get something that's just freshly picked, you can smell it. A chimichurri sauce actually is um, South American, but we've adopted it in other parts of the world. We find that it's really great, so we use it. Put that in the bowl. Um, So some people may want to put this in a food processor, but I like I like the rough chop. All right. Okay. This is good. And then of course we need heat. And this is cayenne pepper. All of the herbs are from um, 
Doreen's farm and this pepper I brought from my little farm, Windy Hill. I, I hope this isn't too much for you. It'll be fine. I think you're going to have to get me some cayenne pepper seeds. Okay. Fair trade. Yes. Okay. I'm not going to use all of that just in case it's too hot. And one clove of garlic here. We're going to use half a lemon. And you can find the recipe down below. So now I'm pouring in a little red wine vinegar and olive oil to finish this off. And then we're going to just add a little salt and black pepper. Now the thing with the chimichurri sauce, uh, we usually make it in big batches and of course it oxidizes so it loses the bright green color, but you can keep it in the refrigerator for a few days and it'll keep the color for a couple of days and then it'll just start to change the color as it ages, right? So how long is it recommended to keep it? You can keep it for up to a week in the refrigerator. Okay. So a little salt and a little Black pepper in addition to the, I'm not going to put too much because I don't know Marine's flavor. <laughs> okay, so there you have it, our chimichurri sauce. And you're going to find the recipe down below. And when we come right back, we are going to um, show you how that's served over a nice piece of salmon. I have in here um, a tablespoon of butter and a little olive oil and so we're gonna go in now hopefully it's hot enough or maybe I should give it a little time just to get as hot as I like it because I like crispy skin on my salmon and I don't like my salmon cooked too much but we're gonna cook it a little more just for the lady right so let's see I'm going to keep them as far apart as possible so that they brown nicely and we're going to let them cook about three minutes on each side It's been lovely being in your kitchen and I um, hope you enjoy the salmon. I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> um, it's been great being on the farm, in the greenhouse, in the kitchen. Mm. And I am certainly going to be back. Look out for us next time. Like, share, subscribe, comment. And we'll see you next week. This is good, guys. Mm -hmm.